Howdy, and welcome to yet another broadcast from Ali. Today we'll be talking about some rumors hovering around about the Union of Professional Nurses and Midwives Ghana, which is the UPNMG. As a trained nurse, you are resilient, you are diligent, you are observant, compassionate, you are assertive, and above all, you are smart. It is to this effect that a nurse must confirm any and all information that they are fed with. As a nurse, we don't just believe in hearsay, but we believe in facts. You may have heard some of these rumors I am about to mention about UPNMG Association and may have probably decided not to join the union because of what you heard. But the question is, are they really true? Well, let's first mention some of these false rumors and then consider the facts. The first one is UPNMG does not have a bargaining certificate, so it's a scam. Two, UPNMG does not have offices and secretariats. It is an online association. Three, UPNMG is a Ponzi scheme and they will collapse in less than six months. Four, UPNMG is only for certificate holders. This particular rumor at times sounds different. Actually, it depends on whom it is being told to. So other times you rather hear them say UPNMG is for professional nurses, that is nursing officers. And for that matter, enrolled nurses and staff nurses are not part of it. Five, UPNMG has no national executives. Six, UPNMG is a SUSU association. They have nothing useful for its members or no better policies for its members. Seven, UPNMG is a DKM financial institution. Eight, UPNMG can't get money to give loans to its members up to 7,000 Ghana cities. Now, the facts. I have personally encountered the first one. That is, UPNMG does not have a bargaining certificate, so it has come. And that was coming from a reputable nurse medicator. When I saw it, I was really surprised. I just couldn't comprehend how such an individual would buy that joke to the extent of spreading it. You know, concerning the bargaining certificate, the labor regulations reads in part that one, where it comes to the notice of the chief labor officer that there exists more than one trade union in an undertaking representing the same class of employees. The chief labor officer shall invite the unions to a meeting to undertake verification to determine which union represents the major of the workers to be issued with a bargaining certificate, except that the union issued with a certificate shall consult or where appropriate invite other unions in the course of negotiation to participate in the negotiation process. Two, where two or more persons or employees desire to form a trade union or employees association, they shall register with a chief labor officer and pay a registration fee of 3 million cities for a registration certificate. Three, where there still remains a dispute, the matter shall be referred to the National Labor Commission for a binding resolution. This in plain English means every profession gets one bargaining certificate. It is just a way of saying we can't call representatives of all the associations that exist for a particular profession to the negotiation table. Hence, instead of calling everyone, the association with the highest number of members or that represents the majority is given the privilege to represent the whole profession in the course of negotiations. And this does not mean 
or does not make the other unions for that same profession scam. On the contrary, if you take a look at point one, you would realize that the union with a bargaining certificate may consult or even invite the other unions in the course of negotiations. To cite a vivid example, the nursing profession has just one bargaining certificate which is currently held by the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, otherwise known as General Enemy, because they represent the majority, having been in operation for over 60 years now. However, if the number of members of another association, for example, UPNMG, exceeds that of General Enemy in the future, they get a privilege of wielding and using the bargaining certificate in the course of negotiations. So that bargaining certificate does not belong to a particular union. No, it is just something that is given to the union within that particular profession that has the highest members to represent the majority or to represent the whole profession when it comes to negotiations. Let's proceed to the second rumor. UPNMG does not have offices or secretariats. It is an online association. To dispute this rumor, you are currently looking at the postal addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, and most importantly, digital addresses of all the 10 regional secretariats. To know if they really exist, kindly get a Ghana Post GPS app from the App Store and search for an office using the digital address. You can then navigate your way to the office right from your phone or tablet. There is currently plans on acquiring district offices as well. One thing you should notice how every advanced corporation or business entity is engaging the media lately. Even the network providers encourage their customers to contact them using their social media handles instead of visiting their offices because of COVID-19. So how wrong is it if a health-based association decides to engage its members via social media? The world in itself is evolving and technology has become the order of the day. UPNMG has simply realize this truth and is working to bring smiles to members via social media. We can't term the union as an online association because of this. You know, I remember another reputable nurse saying UPNMG oppress from hen coops some time ago and I couldn't help but <laughs> laugh because it means they have now realized the rumor that UPNMG doesn't have offices is becoming a plain lie. And so it had to be polished. One thing is no one is ever born in suit and tie. Nah. <laughs> Every corporate entity in Ghana starts small, but with careful planning grows. So per that statement, we can confidently say every union in Ghana has once lived in a hand -creep. right? Anyway, rumor three, UPNMG is a Ponzi scheme and it will collapse in less than six months. This rumor actually has something to do with the seventh point raised earlier which is UPNMG is a DKM financial institution. A Ponzi scheme is a form of fraud in which believe in the success of a non-existent enterprise is fostered by the payment of quick returns to the first investors from the money invested by later investors. This type of scheme was named after Charles Ponzi because he carried out such a fraud between 1919 and 1920. So the question here is, why would anyone compare a union for nurses and midwives to such a scheme? The answer is, the union had a vision that the primitive association or the old association felt was unrealistic. 
people often asked where UPNNG would get the money to actualize all the policies they had in mind. Here are some of the policies. Free life insurance for all members, land scheme, auto or car scheme, loan scheme, higher purchase, hospitals, scholarship scheme and research grants, legal interventions, mutual fund with partial withdrawals, annual souvenirs, just to mention some of them. The union has been operating since 2017. Isn't that way over six months already? It was also termed the DKM financial institution because of the fact that the union promised loans and higher purchase. So others thought it was going to be some sort of trade institution which would eventually collapse or better still wouldn't even get the money to begin operating those policies. But some of the key policies are already operating fine with lots of testimonies available. Room of four, UPNMJ is only for certificate nursing holders. At other times, this particular rumor becomes UPNMJ is for professional nurses or nursing officers. And for that matter, enrolled nurses and staff nurses are not part of it. So it actually depends on who this false rumor is being told to. And it's usually supposed to stop the person from joining the association. So if a person is, let's say, a nursing officer, then they tell the person that, oh, it's falling enrolled nurses and all certificate holders. So that's how the remote goes. But here is the truth. UPNMG belongs to all category of nurses and midwives irrespective of their qualification. It could be certificate, diploma, or any type of degree belonging to the nursing and midwifery fraternity. Room of five. UPNMG has no national executives. Right here on your screen is the national president of UPNMG, Mr. Maxwell Odru Yaboa. You can see his email and a facility where he works. And then you can also see the national vice president. We have the national second vice president, the general secretary, the deputy general secretary, national finance officer, deputy finance officer, national organizer, and national PR. These are some of the national executives you will find. You can see their pictures. Each of them has their emails attached and then the facility where they work. So UPNMG has national executives and that's what you have on your screen. Quite apart from that, there are other executives as well. The association is not just run by national executives only. So other executives include regional and district executives. Any member of UPNMG who needs the contact details of their respective regional and district executives should simply visit the UPNMG website at www.upnmg.com for the link to the national telegram group. We'll be happy to assist you with the complete list of executives, their phone numbers so that you can contact them. Others have used this rumor as a guarantee to deceive newly posted nurses into believing they wouldn't get their mutual fund contribution back when they retire. But guess what? On the 26th August 2021, UPNMG honored its first retiree, Mrs. Georgina Akosiako at Tiobodom, and even gifted her a Samsung flat screen TV. And the event was covered by Joy News. So, so think about, why would you be ignored when it gets to your turn? Rumor 6. 
The EPNMG is a SUSU association. We have nothing useful for its members or no better policies for its members. So the idea behind this remo is basically UPNMG is full of nobodies education wise. And so what better policy could they ever implement? From the onset of the union, it was made known that the union wouldn't operate on a pension fund, but rather a mutual fund. So the money deducted from every member as mutual fund wouldn't be managed by an external entity, but by UPNMG itself. The mutual fund is basically your money, but it is kept with the association until you go on retirement. Then everything is calculated plus interest and given to you. The difference between this and a pension fund is that you qualify for partial withdrawal every five years. That is, you have access to your money even when you are in active service. If you decide to take partial withdrawals, the rest of the money with a union is still yours regardless and you get it when you retire. Isn't this a nice policy? Must we wait until retirement to begin building or investing. The union was named the SUSU Association because of this, but it has proved to be worthy because it is the same money that is used to run the UPNMG mat or the higher pitches and a loan scheme. Some of the money is definitely going to be used for the land and auto schemes as well. And they all come with some interest that a member must pay back. That means more money to run those policies. So if someone thinks the union will collapse because of these really important policies or benefits to the members, then they should really think twice because microfinances who operate by giving loans for some interests are able to grow using that strategy only. Now consider the sources of income to UPNMG and you will know it can't easily collapse. And just so you know, UPNMG has been registered as a limited liability company since 2017. Well, I have to add this to that there is this other rumor going about that um, UPNMG is going to begin deducting building levy when they begin building their hostels. <laughs> that is not even part of the plans of UPNMG to build hostels. There are already enough guest houses and hotels in Ghana. So why would they want to do that? Actually, the plan is to build hospitals. And from the onset of the union, it has been made clear that the union will never deduct building levy for any reason at all. The policies that are already in place is enough to generate enough funds with the, the mutual fund and other income sources. So we wouldn't need to put extra burden on the member to be able to generate funds to build whether be it hospital or or whatever projects that it's needed to be undertaken. Remo seven, which would also be the last to be discussed in this broadcast. UPNMG cannot get money to give loans to its members up to seven thousand Ghana cities. As explained earlier. Some of the sources of income for UPNMG to operate the loan scheme include a mutual fund and interests paid by members who take the loan. You know, there isn't much explanation to this actually. If you need testimonies from real members of the association, kindly visit the UPNMG website at www.upnmg.com to find the National Telegram Group link and join the platform. You can also go to downloads on the website and then you download a PDF document 
that contains the requirement to access the loan. Everything is there in plain sight, nothing is hidden. All the amounts you can qualify for and how much mutual fund you should pay to be able to access the respective amounts and also you should take into consideration your affordability these are some of the things it would be really great if you visit the website to see things for yourself okay thank you for your time in listening to this broadcast this is ali your host